So let's bring in Tal Heinrich, a spokeswoman for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, she is also a journalist in Israel as well. Tal, good to have you with us today. Uh, you went, t Tell us what your path has been in the last five days and how you are functioning in Israel right now. Martha, I think you described it very well at the top of your segment. There is indeed much agony in Israel right now. We are hurting. We are a nation in deep mourning. But we launched a counteroffensive, and we're also very much determined to win this war. There is simply no other way. We must win this war. This is a war against Hamas. They, as you, you also showed some pictures before, they acted as savages. They are savages. This is a war between the civilized world, represented by Israel here, and between savages. Um, what they have done, the ISIS-style atrocities, as described by survivors of these different scenes that took place across the country, especially in the South, this is something that's unbelievable. And they will pay a very heavy price, a, a price that will reverberate um, in, in, in the near future and will be remembered by uh, the next generations. They will not try us again after we're done with this operation. And the prime minister has said uh, it will take as long as it takes. I, I know that you uh, have worked, worked closely with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Tell me a little bit about what the last five days have been like for him. What is his mood right now? What can you reveal about how he's looking at all of this, Tal? Well, the, the prime minister is, again, very determined to win this war. He's telling our enemies, he's telling Hamas and also our enemies on other fronts in the northern border, Hezbollah, uh, as well, do not try us. Do not try us. President Biden said it yesterday, and Israelis are very grateful for uh, the support of the president and the United States and the American people. Um, and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, you probably heard, there's a unity government uh, in Israel forming, being yeah. established as we're speaking right now. And I think that this is uh, very much reflective of the national, the, the public sentiment here in the country. Um, our enemies should not be mistaken. Yes, we have our political differences. We have a very fierce ongoing political debates. Well, not so much ongoing now. Everyone is focused on one thing alone, and that is winning this war. But um, in recent months, of course, we had our uh, differences at play here in the country among uh, the people. But we are very much united behind uh, the IDF, behind the military, behind this national effort. And everyone is doing their own part. Civilians uh, are doing amazing things. Uh, you know, the, the, the IDF, everyone in the country, I say the IDF, but just um, to, to, to make American viewers better understand, everyone in this country either knows an IDF soldier or someone who was abducted into Gaza, someone who was injured, someone who was killed. Uh, Israel is a small country. It's like a family here. We're all part of this, and we're all determined to win this. Tal, before I let you go, uh, when you see these reports that uh, Americans support the Palestinians more than Israel and some of these recent polling that has been done, and you see some of these Harvard students who have posters showing the paragliders and expressing their support for these invaders. What do you, what do you think about that? What would you like to say to them about what they should understand? Well, they're getting it wrong, very much wrong. Um, they said it's a, it's a war of the civilized against savages. Who, who, who can uh, express support? There's no both sideism here. Uh, there's no rhetoric that fits here uh, that we've seen in, in past confrontations, past conflicts, uh, you know, of, uh, a cycle of violence and, and, and so on. Uh, it simply doesn't fit here. There's pure evil and there is a Jewish and democratic state, a Jewish people that just want to survive in this world in a state of their own without pe being per persecuted. And Hamas's charter says it very cl clear. They're calling... Um, you know, uh, for the annihilation of, of the Jewish state. Um, they're, they're calling for the killing of the Jews. But I, I, don't, I don't think, Martha, that these voices specifically should be amplified. Yes, we should address them, but I want to use this platform that you're giving me right now to um, express gratitude on uh, behalf um, of, of the citizens of Israel uh, for the support that we're getting from the American people, from uh, Congress people, for, from President Biden, really, um, things that he said in the speech yes, yesterday, um, it was really, um, you know, what every Israeli uh, wanted to hear, that the U.S. will stand by Israel and Israel has the right to defend itself, full stop.
Full stop, indeed. Uh, Tal, thank you very much. I hope you'll join us again uh, as we continue to cover this war, which we hope uh, will not go on for too much longer. Uh, and we thank you very much for your efforts and your time today. Thank you, Tal. So Fox Corporation has made a $1 million donation to United Jewish Appeal, which is providing urgent relief to those impacted by the atrocities in Israel. If you'd like to donate, visit UJA. F-E-D-N-Y dot org. You see um, the Q code and uh, the address on your screen there. If you want to make a donation, that is where we suggest that you head. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.